So today you're going to practice a style of shading called cross hatching. Um, so we have worked with traditional shading where you will just change your pressure with a pencil to fill in solid areas of value. Okay, you have practiced stippling where you space and place your dots to create areas of value. And now we're gonna do a technique called cross hatching. So you'll hear uh, two different terms. You'll hear hatching and cross hatching. Hatching is when you create parallel lines in one direction. So hatching looks similar to this. So all of your lines go parallel. Cross hatching is when you make parallel lines and then cross them in different directions. Okay, so that would be cross hatching. Okay. Now you can create your marks in different ways. And the ways that you place your marks will create different areas of value. And it also creates a different texture. Um, you can change your angles. You can um, create your strokes either vertically or horizontally or diagonal from left to right, um, or from right to left or from top to bottom. You can make short strokes, you can make long strokes. Um, and all of those create um, different looks or they might remind you of different textures. So you're gonna utilize those different techniques as you see best fit when you pick subject matters um, and when you are trying to create form, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so you could very simply fill vertical lines. You could create vertical lines that cross from left to right. You could create vertical lines that are more tight and they cross in that direction. Okay, so all of these are examples of hatching and cross hatching, but they give you a different value and they also give you a very different feel. Okay, so just take a couple of minutes and fill these boxes with different ways of making marks. Okay, so again, they could be really tight diagonals and then I'm gonna cross it with diagonals. I'll leave the verticals out of that one. Now this technique is much better done with a pen um, or I'm using a thin Sharpie, some sort of um, inking device. You don't wanna do a pencil because then it's gonna smudge and you lose your effect. This time I'll go horizontal. I'll down. I could also utilize more than two different strokes. So I could fill in that way. And again, the thickness of your line, also how tightly you space them, really changes the overall appearance. So in those boxes, you're gonna create just different combinations of marks and don't just copy the ones that I have, okay? Now, down here, you're going to create a value scale. So you're going to make this dark to light, okay? And we're not gonna color anything in solid. Everything is created with a line. So our darkest spaces are going to be created by covering the white of your paper. The more lines I create, the less spaces that show through, the darker my marks appear. Now over here where they're light, I have a lot more paper showing through, so I have a much different value. Okay, so this is really dark, this is really light, and then in the spaces between, you're going to fill in so that they now you can always add more so my rule of thumb is to not go too dark too quick because you can add more in but you can't take them away so go a little easy at first you can always add in a couple to fill it Okay, and then make sure that you feel that difference from one to the next. Okay, I feel like I have too big of a jump from here to here, so I'm just gonna add a few extra. Change that value. Okay, and then these seem a little similar, so I'm just gonna add a couple extra in this one. Okay, so make those adjustments, but again, make sure you see the difference between each one. None of these should feel too similar. Okay, 
Now, when we shade, we're trying to create form. Okay, so form is the appearance of three-dimensional um, in your work. So consistency with your stroke choice and direction is what you want to work on and follow the form. So you're always thinking, is this a curved object? If it has a curve to it, you wanna curve your lines. So for example, here where this is a, has a curve, I don't wanna make straight up and down lines, okay? Um, the same thing with my sphere. If I want it to feel round, I need to make sure my, my lines are creating those curves. We also don't need to fill with the length of your boxes. So if I have this rectangle here, yes, I could make top to bottom lines, or I could decide that I like the way that it looks by creating more rows of lines. Okay. And I could fill in that way. Since it's a more vertical, I made my lines more vertical to follow that. So the same way here, we have some diagonals. So I don't wanna make vertical lines on there because it's gonna flatten my planes. I wanna work with the planes that are given to me and my object. So here, I'm going to build this up at that diagonal. So you wanna think about parallel, parallel, parallel. So not only are your marks parallel, but your lines are parallel to the space that you're given to the contours of your object. So again, your lines don't have to go all the way end to end. You can fill with shorter marks. That'll give you a little bit more control too. Okay, and then on this side, I'm gonna make these vertical so that I can see the difference. And I'm gonna make my value different. Okay, so if I'm making the top of my plane lighter, I'm gonna make the side of it a little darker. That way I don't lose my form. If it's all the same, then I lose that three-dimensionality of it, okay? Just make sure you're not coloring anything in solid, okay? And then this one, so you have a slight angle, so you wanna grab that angle. This is a more expressive style, okay? It dates back um, to the days of printing, the original printing presses, um, where they had to create prints to reproduce okay, in their books. Okay, and then this is the type of shading that they had to utilize. Okay, so this inner part is darker, and I'm following these curves here. Okay, and then my outer part, and again, this is a curve, so I don't wanna use a straight line. That would break my plane, that would flatten my plane. I wanna follow my form, follow my form. So follow, 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 curve those lines. Okay, and you can go and cross hatch these if you want. You could leave them like this. If I wanted to add just a little shadow at the bottom, maybe a little shadow at the top, I can start to add a little bit of shading to that by adding a couple more lines. And then the same thing here, I'm gonna follow this form. I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter. Again, you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I want you to create your own shading. But again, the cylinder needs curves or else it'll feel flat. The edges of my cylinder are a little bit darker. I'm gonna go in and add this. You see that I'm turning my paper, that's just a matter of comfort. Okay, my arm is more comfortable in one direction than the other. Okay, and then my top plane. Fill that in. And then now my sphere. Again, no straight lines or you're gonna flatten it and it's not gonna look like a sphere. So you wanna follow those contours, follow those contours. them down so they're creating little smiles. Up here they kind of create a little bit of a frown. And then that would be shading of the form. Okay, so now you know how to stipple. Now you know how to cross hatch for your 
um, final assignment for your sketchbook this week, you are going to pick the one that you would like to utilize and you can shade in any subject matter that you want, either using stippling or cross hatching. Have fun with it.